Hello everyone, welcome back to another week on my YouTube channel. Um, my name is Brandy, I am with Brushed by Brandy, and this week we're going to be working on this piece behind me, and it's far from complete right now, but we're going to get it from start to finish during this video. So this is actually a custom order, and my customer sent me images of her room, and so we're using that for our color inspiration. I gave her a few examples of some different pieces of my work that she chose from, and that got us started on our color finish. So that's why we're going with the blues and into some neutrals. Um, it's a beautiful piece of furniture, you guys. This was chosen from my inventory, and then she got to choose the finishes. Um, and that brings up an interesting point. Someone asked me on my live video tonight, and I love working on pieces that I actually find myself. And that's because I can assess when I go out looking for a piece, what repairs it needs, what's the condition, the quality of construction. Whereas if somebody else tries to bring me a piece of furniture, um, they don't always know how to assess those things. And so sometimes it's, it's only happened once that I've ended up with a piece of furniture that I wasn't comfortable working on from a customer. I can usually tell from photos, but for the most part, I like to steer people towards pieces that I've chosen in my inventory. And that's because I can choose what I'm working on and I know that they're in a condition and a quality that is worth refinishing. And so that's exactly where this piece behind me came from and she got to choose her finishes. Um, and I think it's gonna be a beautiful piece of furniture when we're done. So you guys stay tuned. We're gonna do some blending this week. We're gonna make a wood stained top on this one. We're gonna color some hardware. And then in the end, I'll show you uh, the room that we were trying to coordinate with and you can see how close we got. So stay tuned. I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys learn a lot this week and let's get started. All right, here's where I'm starting on this piece, you guys. This is a custom order. As always, I started off by giving it a good cleaning with Dixie Belle white lining and removing my hardware. All right, I have cleaned this piece and now I'm ready to go ahead and apply my Dixie Belle Boss, which is a stain and odor blocking primer. This one is definitely a bleeder. When I was wiping it with my Dixie Belle white lining, it wiped dirty and uh, brown rags. And that tells me that the tannins from this piece are coming out and the the moisture from the cleaner can actually leach them out. And so I'm just using Dixie Belle Boss. This is Boss in gray. It also comes in clear and in white. This is my favorite color to use of the Dixie Belle Boss because I love the coverage of it. I'm gonna do two coats in this, and this is going to seal off my piece and create a barrier so those tannins from the wood will not, see not seep through into my porous paint. Here is where I am on this one with two coats of Dixie Belle Boss on it in gray. It already looks better. It's a huge improvement. I love how this boss lays on. I find that sometimes I'll even apply boss even when I'm not sure that I need it because I love how a coat of paint lays over boss. Um, it helps the paint kind of give something it, for it to bite onto um, and gives me a beautiful base coat. Sometimes I also find if you're struggling with what finishes to put on a piece, if you put a coat of primer on it, it helps you see the piece in a different light. So this can be a way that if you're struggling with finishes to help you kind of decide what, what direction you want to go by giving it a new look in a clean base of primer. All right, you guys, I hope you're ready. This is a blended finish, which means you're gonna be seeing tons of blending on this video. Let me go through the colors that I'm using on this. Starting from the bottom, my darkest color is in the navy, and then it goes up into Yankee Blue, and then at the top, I'm gonna to use some Dusty Blue, and my lightest color is Dixie Belle Sawmill Gravy. So this is a four color blend, and I'm not going in a perfect ombre. An ombre would be just a straight across striped kind of blending that fades from bottom to top. I'm gonna to kind of create a highlight in the center. So you'll notice I'm shaping out this kind of U-shaped frame, and that's because I want it to look like the light is just hitting it in the center of the piece versus going from a, a straight dark to light top. This is just my base coat, so I'm really just getting my colors decided, getting them laid out, seeing if I like the color layout. And actually, I did the front of this piece on a live video, and I did make a color change. I started out having another darker color at the base, which um, was Midnight Sky, and I found it was just too much dark. I wanted to lighten the piece up a little bit, so I eliminated that fifth color, and I made my darkest color in the navy, and then I gradated, gradated up from there. So while I am showing you how I go through and do this color blend on the base, you'll notice I'm not worrying too much about whether my blends are perfect. I'm gonna come back and perfect all that in my second coat. I do two coats blended, and that means my base coat is blended and my second coat is also blended exactly the same. And I do that because I find it gives the colors so much more saturation when they're blended over the top of each other. 
versus if I did a solid base coat and then a blended finish over the top of that. I'm not gonna get that same color saturation and coverage. It's much, much easier if I just do two coats the same. Then I've got the coverage on my base coat and my second is just has to be for perfecting it. All right, you guys ready to see how I blend up the front of this? This is a wide open space and so it was kind of a challenge. Um, so I'm gonna come back and this is my second coat here. So this is where I'm gonna be perfecting my color scheme. I did decide after my first coat, I wanna carry this white down a little bit lower. So you're gonna notice that when I'm laying on the sawmill gravy, I carry it down just below that band in the middle. You can see that band of, of wood. I'm gonna carry it just below that because I wanted to lighten up the base of this a little bit. I usually tend to reverse my order. So I started this by doing my dark from bottom up and now I'm gonna go from light from top down on my second coat. And that's because I know that I tend to get a little heavy handed wherever I start. And so I need to even out my colors here. And I know that's something that I do. So I just reverse myself on my second coat and that's how I correct it. I don't think there's any right or wrong way, whether you start with your dark colors or your light colors, it's really personal preference, but I do it this way because I recognize that it's something that I tend to do on all my finishes and get a little heavy handed wherever I start at. I'm focusing on the top section of this piece. I don't wanna to try to blend over the front of this at all at one time, it's a really large surface. So if I focus on smaller areas and kind of break it apart, it's gonna be much easier. So what I did here is lay on my sawmill gravy and a little bit of dusty blue up the top. And now I'm using my Dixie Belle Best Sting brush and I'm just working those colors together around the edges. The Best Sting brush in a swirling motion will pull these two colors into each other. So I just go around the edges and I swirl them into each other. And then I'm coming back with my Dixie Belle Oval Medium and I'm gonna smooth out those swirl marks that I create with the Best Sting brush. So I find that the Best Sting brush makes it really easy to go over large surface areas because it gets a blend done quickly, but it's not quite as smooth as I wanted for this look and that's where the Oval Medium came in. I left a little tiny bit of cloudiness in this blend and that's because it's a pretty plain front and I wanted a little bit of interest in the finish. So I just left a little bit of cloudiness in it and it's a really pretty look.
I am almost done with the front of this piece only. I found that once I did the base and I lightened it up, I needed another coat because this one coat of lighter colors down at the bottom didn't cover the darker colors I had underneath it. So I'm gonna do this base again, you guys. It seems like it takes a while, but I wanna say that I probably spent about 20 minutes working on the front of this base, um, so it wasn't too bad at all. And I'm gonna repeat the same process. I come back, I'm gonna lay my colors on, I'm gonna swirl them together with my Dixie Belle Besting brush and then smooth it out with my oval medium. One thing I can never teach, and it's really hard for me to show on camera, but I'm a really light-handed painter. So blending can be difficult if you have a heavy, heavy hand. When I'm using my brush, I'm usually just using the tips of the bristles. Um, I don't put a lot of pressure on my brush, and that's really common. Um, and that's how I get such smooth finishes with no brush strokes. It's really that light-handed painting. <laughs>
All right, I finally feel good about where the front of this piece is. Yes, it did take me three coats, but you guys, totally worth it. This is the main focal area of the piece, so I wanna make sure that I get it right. So I did this a few times before I felt really good about where it is. That's not uncommon at all. So now I need to come and I'm gonna do inside the frame. And what I do is I'm gonna pull my drawers out and then I'm gonna go and find the color that's on the front of the piece and I'm just gonna make inside the frame work. And then I'm gonna also hit around the edges of my drawer boxes. So I always do this on my pieces. I don't always show it on video, but I always hit the inside of my frame and make it match the um, front of my piece. There is no lip on these drawers, so I wanna make sure that when they're pushed into the body that there's no wood that's showing around my drawer frame. So just doing a little bit of light blending around the frame helps it look seamless even when those drawers are pushed in. You'll notice I'm doing this last when I've got my body totally perfected, and that's because I don't wanna to add too many coats around the frame of my piece. It can cause my drawers to stick. So I try to do this last when I've got all my colors decided, and that way I'm only putting one coat on the inside of the frame. I am going to add some wood stain details to this. I'm doing a wood stain top and then I'm also going to stain the band that's around the center of the body. I didn't worry about getting paint or primer onto these parts while I was working on the piece and that's because I'm just going to come back and sand it off using my surf prep sander with an 80 grit paper. All right, I am going to go ahead and apply some wax detailing to the side of this piece and also to the front drawers. So I'm just taking a really skinny artist brush and my best stain wax in black, and I'm gonna go ahead and ride these corners right here. And once I've hit all the corners, I'm gonna go around this entire box. I'm actually just using a chip brush this time and I've cut the tips off so it's pretty even just on the chip tips, but this is just a really cheap chip chip brush and I'm just going to smudge out those waxes and it just pulls it out a little bit from the corner and gives it a nice soft line on the edge of this piece. Now I'm going to be adding a stencil to the center of this but I'm doing my wax detailing before so these will be underneath my wax stenciling. All right, so I'm gonna complete that around the outside of this side. And then I'm also doing my drawers on the front of this piece. So I'm using a 50-50 mixture of white gold, or of um, yellow gold and silver gilding wax. I'm just using my finger and I brought it along all the details on the front. And then also on these medallions, I just started on the edges and I pulled it in towards the center, just using my finger for a really nice soft effect. Now I usually use a metallic on every piece and this is a custom order so I just asked my customer what color metallic she preferred on this design and she chose the white gold which I just mixed silver and gold for this nice soft gold. And then on the edges of these drawers all I'm going to do is hit these with some wax details also. So I'm going to start with this natural bristle brush, a little bit of my best thing wax and I'm going to hit the edges and I'm just going to pull it inward. And then I'm going to kind of smudge it out as the wax on my brush gets put onto the surface and there's less on my brush. I start using my brush to smudge it. And I'm going to do that going all the way up the side of this drawer. It's not as apparent on the uh, darker colors as it is up top on the light colors. But you can still definitely tell that there's a shadowing effect. And I'm just pulling it in from this edge. And then I'm gonna come back with my chip brush again. And I'm just gonna hit those edges and really just kind of darken them. Just gives a nice soft darkness to the very edges of that wax. So this is how I did all the drawer edges on this piece. Once I push it in, I'm just gonna carry this out a little bit onto the edge on the top and a little bit onto the bottom. And then Dixie Belle Best Stain Wax is a water-based wax, so I can go ahead and coat this in clear coat. I'm also going to coat my gilding wax just because it's such a small amount, such small details. I'll let that dry for 24 hours, and then I'm also going to clear coat all this. So all this will get a clear coat over the top along with my paint finish. I'm applying all my waxes on this onto raw paint. Um, I just like that because I like that it gives me a little more saturated kind of... Uh, I don't know, almost just more dirty look. Whereas if you want more control, you can apply your clear coat and then put your dark waxes over top. 
Okay, I am using the Victorian Damask stencil and I'm just gonna do a stencil in my white gold gilding wax. This is a 50-50 mixture of Dixieville gold and silver gilding wax. And I'm just using a stencil brush and I'm massaging it over the top of the stencil. And I used a little bit of Super uh, 77 spray adhesive from 3M. That's what's making my stencil stick to the side of my piece. And it allows me to be kind of aggressive with my stencil brush. It keeps my stencil from moving. I'm doing this over my raw paint. It's not been sealed. Um, and I do it kind of unevenly so it can be stronger in some areas and less in others. And it gives it this beautiful kind of worn tapestry look. I've gone over the entirety of my stencil and I'm going to go ahead and pull this back and this is the design that I'm left with. And I love how it's a little bit uneven. I have a little bit of my sil silver leafing from previous use deck here. I'll let my um, gilding wax dry and then I'll just give that a light sanding and that'll pop right off. Uh, and then for my next placement I'm just going to take my stencil. I don't even need to reapply the adhesive. I'm going to match it up to the repeat that I find at the bottom of this pattern which is right about there. I can go ahead and re-adhere it. And then I'm just gonna continue and that will give me the remaining portion of my stencil. I added a little bit of Dixie Belle No Pain Gel Stain in Espresso to the top. And then I spray these pieces in two coats of Gator Hide and they're done, they're beautiful, you guys. You can find links for everything I used in this video in the description for this post. You can also find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and my website at brushbybrandy.com. This was a custom order. This one is ready to go out to the customer. It's gonna look beautiful in her bedroom and I hope she enjoys it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and click that subscribe button and come back next week. We'll have a new video for you.